Yeah, what about you? Can you hear me? Yeah, that's yeah. great. Nice. Can we go ahead? Yeah, sure. Um, and for the audience, does anyone ask a question? Does anyone want to jump on stage? Hello, Paul. Hi, hey, everyone. Hi, How's welcome to the stage. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm more curious about the planning stages of it and how you plan the composition. And, uh, you know, I get that you go scouting and all that, but um, what tools do you guys use and um, and just how to plan a, a great composition of the supermoon? I can go first. Uh, uh, I so I use the photographer's Epiphemeris because I do like to work on my laptop and um, I, and that's a des there's a des desktop version and so PhotoPills is only a phone version. Um, so I usually start by using the uh, the uh, uh, photographer's Epiphemeris just to see which you know where can I align some, the first thing that I think is what, where are the icons, you know, where I am right now. And so I'm in London will be things like Tower Bridge, the charge, you know, tall buildings, iconic places. And then I use the desktop version of the photographers of Ifmaris to kind of uh, see where in the city more or less when I get that alignment of the moonrise or, or the moonset. And then I go to photo pills to um, start oh, and then actually go to Google Maps and start trying to find like a park or like a building that has a restaurant and I have like public access to. Um, and then, you know, for those details of how the moon will look, um, you know, how the moon will look like super, you know, in terms of like size in relation to the subject, then I'll go, you know, to those details into photo pills. Um, but Fabian, you want to say something? Yeah, I think that the process is pretty much the same. So I use photo pills. I don't really use the photographer ephemeris, especially since when they went I wouldn't say paid, but almost paid because now you can't, well, whatever. Uh, so I use PhotoPills a lot. And like I said earlier, what I try to see is based on the day I want to shoot, uh, is where what the angle is of the, the moon position, the sun position at moonrise moon or moonset, because these are the two events that I want to photograph. I don't really photograph the moon when it's high in the sky. And based on that, the, so the app gives you a sort of uh, straight line from where you are to the moon position, right? It's hard to, it's hard to explain uh, verbally without having anything visual in front of me, especially for me as a former designer, but I'm very visual, but I'll try. And on photo peels, you can put a, you can put a black pin on the uh, building that you want to include in the frame. So I'm taking London as an example again, and I, I take the gherkin. It's mostly is that the, the the building that I shoot the most, I think. And so I put the, this black pin on the basement of the gherkin, right on the at the base of the gherkin, and I try to align the position of the moon to that pin, and then move myself to have the pin, the black pin and my position, which is also available on photo pills, on the line where the, where the moon will be. That gives me the perfect alignment. From there, I then move further away uh, based on the distance I want to shoot, how large I want the moon and, and stuff like that. But that's, that's the main thing. So I, I decide the building, I decide on the alignment based on the position of the moon. And then I adjust on the fly. I check the, the building height. So again, the gherkin is 180 meters high. So I look at when in uh, before the moon set or the moon rise, the moon will be at that, at that height or the center of the moon will be at that height. And then I move myself to find either a park or a high rise building that I can have access to or any other a friend apartment. <laughs> any other position where I can shoot from. Um, I have a question for Paul, actually. Do, 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 you, do you know what PhotoPills is before, you know, the photo photographer ephemeris? Or, or does, does it sound weird to you, these things that we're saying? 
Yeah, I actually, I, I have both apps and, and it can okay. be overwhelming um, using them. Uh, and it probably is more, a little bit more overwhelming without the visual, uh, like you guys said. But yeah. uh, I think I'm, I'm kind of foreseeing or imagining it while you were describing it. Yeah, so I think um, because I've, I've had the photo peers for quite a while now. And in the beginning, I was at the same boat as you. I found it really overwhelming and I couldn't understand what does this button do. So the guy who uh, actually makes the app uh, or, or he's the boss or whatever he is, you know, I think he's called Rafael. He's like a Spanish guy. Uh, if you go to YouTube, he has a video that he explains. <coughs> sorry, if he explains exactly what you need to do to plan the shot. And you can actually, well, I'm not saying you're going to see it in front of you, but you can actually visualize where the moon is going to be, how high it's going to be at the particular time of the day, and uh, how large is going to be against the subject, depending from where you shoot. So the, his, his uh, video goes, I think it's about 10 minutes long, and he goes into extreme detail on every single aspect of like the mathematical aspect and trigonometry of it. And, you know, every layers and buttons you need to press in order to achieve that. And um, I've, I've used this the past six months. And, you know, we went out shooting with Fabian and with Mario, with Priya, a couple of ones. Uh, we shot, you know, with Fabian, we shot the moon. Once we were unlucky because of the weather, but the other two times was pretty good. Um, with Mar as well. Uh, we had some not that much luck with it because of the weather. <laughs> yeah. With, yeah, with Priya, we were actually, I think all four of us, we were trying to align uh, the sun because obviously you can see the sun as well. So, you know, you can, um, I, I, think, I think my suggestion, Paul, would be to be familiar with the composition you want to create. And, you know, you find those spot that you need to shoot the composition and then you use the photo peels in order to make sure you can get the shot. Uh, one of the things I do is because usually I have the composition in my mind, unless I am consulting Fabian because he's cutting so many areas that I usually don't go. Um, one of the things that I do is that when I know my subject is that I go to the place that I want to shoot it on another day and I literally bring up the app and the um, augmented reality. I make sure I calibrate the augmented reality because most of the time is out. So I make sure I cal calibrate that. And I actually visualize um, the shot and I calculate the numbers right then and there because I think it's, it's the only way I could get more accurate results, if that helps. Yeah, that, that definitely helps. I did. I actually did most of what you, you suggested in the last Superman when I tried to shoot it. Um, I'm actually here in Seattle. And I no tried way! I'm from Seattle. <laughs> nice! <laughs> I've shot it with a space needle many times. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, well, I'm sure you know Tim. Yes, Tim Durkin, yes. Yeah, He's a so, big moon fan, yeah. Yeah, so the last supermoon I attempted, inspired by his shots of the supermoon, I tried that, and I actually I did go and scout it the day before and all that, but I just didn't get the alignment right. I'm not sure if I just picked. I had two locations in mind, and I'm not sure if I just didn't pick the right one that I thought it would do. Um, those, those kind of things. So I think what my, uh, I just need more practice, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, they're, they're, I have some, and I think everybody has some several attempts. And even with apps these days, we always joke like, oh, the moon's going to be a little bit to the left or to the right, and we need to start running with our tripods, you know. But, yeah. But for the planning, as you know, think tall buildings and, um, you know, show up, look around, you know, the, the day before um, and uh, calibrate, like George says, calibrate, calibrate photo pills. It's really important. Like you say, it's like it's usually always off. Um, and so in order to calibrate, you need to, you know, to use the sun or the moon. So make sure like it's, it's, you know, not blue hour that you can actually visually and visually manually uh, align them to calibrate them. But, but yeah, 
yeah, you'll get there. No worries. And Seattle has, you know, nice buildings as the Space Needle also has the Columbia Tower, you know, the Smith Tower. Um, he has some um, some really good spots. So that this this, this July fun. should be from, um, what's the park, actually? Ila Bailey Park. Paul? Oh, okay. So that was my second... <laughs> Yeah, that Ila Billy Park. Should be I, 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 I know just... I know how to capture the moon in Seattle every month. <laughs> <laughs> I've memorized it. So July yeah. is Ila Billy Park. Okay, okay. because You'll I, try... chose, yeah. I was going between that and the last supermoon and the bridge. Okay, the it's bridge. more like Ila uh, Bailey than the bridge, actually. There. Yeah, the bridge is more May. So from Ila Bailey, you'll get the moonrise uh, behind the city. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> and I think you guys mentioned you're, there's another, there's a third supermoon, and that's that's that what you're referring to in July? No, this is, it's the, so the next supermoon is the 24th of June. Um, oh, okay, in a couple of days. And okay. it, so this, is, this Thursday is going to be the last month of the year, but obviously in photography, you know, as I said before, a supermoon is around 70% larger than the normal full moon. So you can actually get a larger full moon uh, if you're like farther away and doing like, you know, more or less compression than a super moon. But it's always exciting, you know, oh, it's a super moon. I mean, <laughs> you always get excited about that. Yeah, because on Thursday, we'll be in Palouse and I'm going to try to see what I can do over there with, with, the soup, with the super moon on the 24th. Palouse is not a great spot, to be honest, because there's not a lot of tall buildings. You know, you have just, you know, the hills, which is, you know, completely empty. And you have a really nice, you know, view of what's around you for miles and miles. But you have barns, which are not very tall. So to be very honest, like I think moon photography is more like a city thing. It can be a landscape thing. But Palouse, honestly, it's not like... I will look for for a barn, but a tall one. Yeah, I, I was thinking that too, but I didn't know there was a third supermoon until I saw this clubhouse, and <laughs> we've already set up and booked our stuff over there to to do to do really do the rolling hills. I'm like, maybe I can see what I can do if the supermoon's actually coming out. <laughs> well, try it with a tree here, in a distance. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we'll be From, scouting. Uh, Boot Park, you know, the, the park is Belus, the top one. Um, Boot State Park, something like that. And you have a view and sometimes you see trees. I don't know. Just the thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Stepto Butte, yeah. I think another, another thing we don't, we don't actually have, another um, factor to answer your question. Uh, for the, obviously, you know, with Mar being from Seattle, she can, she can help more after answering this question. Um, what is the focal length that you have? What's the longest length you have? And the longest lens I have is a 200 to 600. Okay, so you're on 600. So, okay, th this is this is a good focal length to shoot the moon. Because I was wondering, because sometimes people say, you know, oh, I have a 70 to 200. And obviously, you know, 200 to 600 changes a lot in the way you're going to be planning your composition and everything. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, yeah. So that's what... Um, that's what I'll be shooting with when I when I try. So are you are you a Sony shooter or an Aircom shooter? A Sony. Sony, yeah, I thought so. Good. So, <laughs> so you see, you see, with with the cam with your setup, are you shooting like if you have that lens, you must be shooting like something with, um, you know, I guess in what were they called? A two, Alpha two, Alpha one. What is it? Um, I have the R four. Okay, seven R four. So you have like sixty megapixels, right? Yes. Okay, so so imagine that I think with what you have, you are very capable of shooting from extremely far, and then you know to get the compression of that, and then you can crop. You have a lot of megapixels to crop in, in order to you know create like you know a, a bigger moon in the in your composition and everything you know so you you have a lot of good toys to play with there so so i think the important thing for you as, as per my understanding now is that you need to to find the right place to you know make your shot happen you know i have an idea paul hope it helps if i was if i were you i would shoot with the windmill 
Oh, have, okay. Yeah, we have a couple there in the Palouz, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do that. I can wait to oh, see your shot. Be, yeah. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to scout for, for one of those windmills and see where, where it aligns. You can also enable in PhotoPills all the settings of your camera and lens, so it will help to see how, how large the moon will be and how distant you need to be to have a very large moon that includes all the subjects, etc., for example. I do have a quick question, though. Um, I just want to make sure I'm understanding in PhotoPills. So sure. I am in the, uh, my, the moon box. And then when I go to the calendar and pick the 24th, so that shows the full moon. So so that's the, the 24th. So the moon that shows here in Seattle is 4.48 a.m. And the moon rise is 9.47. So is that the day that I need to be out or, or should I be out like the day before? No, that will be the exact day. So on the twenty fourth, okay. so on the twenty fourth at I don't know four fifteen or whatever he was saying, it means that the moon is going to start rising, and at night fifteen or whatever it says is going to start setting. So make okay. sure you know there's something that a lot of people get wrong when you calculate the numbers. When it says rising and setting is the minute that the moon starts showing at the horizon, you need to make sure that you are aware of the height that you are from the actual horizon and where the horizon is. Because a lot of times what happens is that you need to wait for about 15 minutes for the moon to elevate to be able to see where it's going to be and what happens. So when you're planning, you know, you need to, there's a setting. As I said, you need to watch that video on, uh, go to like photo, you know, type in photo pits, how to shoot the super, the super moon on YouTube and it will give you all the information there. You know, because a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to be there on time. And then because the eye level sees the buildings in the, or, or the, whatever your subject is, the tree in the far distance, they think that the time the moon is going to show on the app is the actual time that you'll be able to shoot it, which is not actually true. Gotcha. Yeah, that, that's a very, yeah, this is a very great question and very great, yeah, point, George. Yeah, around 15 minutes of, of wait. Ritma, welcome to the stage. Hi. Girl. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Mara. Hi, everyone. I mean, uh, thank you for you know, inviting me here. I'm, I'm new here. Uh, really good to know you all, your process, your journey into photography. And you all got me excited to try capture super moon this week, if, if weather permits, uh, UK weather. But no, thank you all for great tips. Um, I just got a cheap uh, 350 Sony lens and don't have a converter extender yet. But as George mentioned, should be doable. So I'll try and see. Uh, but I have a silly question about the focus. So should it be auto or manual? focus to capture moon uh if anybody else not gonna go ahead i'm gonna answer that so priya i, I saw priya priya you want to go ahead yeah me too yeah cool. i just saw that <laughs> um i was gonna say for the moon you can use autofocus um whereas obviously astrophotography when we try to dirtle door yeah that one needs manual um yeah. the moon can be autofocus because there's enough light cool okay yeah yeah, yeah, that that's why I mean, the question uh, for the stars, the Milky Way, it was manual. So I was trying manual yesterday, but um, yeah, good tip. Okay, I'll try the auto yeah. one this time. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I was just to be quick about the focus, right? So when you look at the book, I mean, uh, where are you? Ba are you based in in England or Not you're based a, elsewhere? Mm -hmm. London, yeah. So, okay, so when you see the moon, right, on the bottom of it, there's a big crater, I don't know the name, with like three lines going. It's, it looks like a roundabout with a crater in the middle. Uh, this is usually one of the best parts to use your middle focus point and to frame it somewhere in the middle. Because obviously with your aperture, if you're shooting like around f11, you should be able to have enough depth of field in order to, um, what's it called, to, to have the entire moon in focus. So, but, but, but just remember one thing, 
Um, it's, it's, if, if the moon comes out soft, it's not literally the problem of your lens or your camera particularly. It might be the fact that if you're shooting on an actual full moon day, the moon does come soft. Um, no matter what you do, unless you have like a super massive telescope with um, a really high end camera that you can take, I don't know, 60 to 100 photos and then you can put them together in post processing. So, so for me, if you're using autofocus, just uh, find one of the craters that looks the sharpest. You can actually magnify on your camera times 10, not only times 5, times 10 with a 350. Make sure you find a crater that looks um, detailed because you'll be able to see that and make sure you focus on the crater and then you know take your shots if that helps and mm -hmm. I'll pass it on to Priya for the Milky Way stuff. Great tip, thanks. Oh, yeah, um, no problem. So Rhythm and I were actually shooting together when we were at Dirtle Door a few weeks ago when I'd sent you guys that photo and uh, we couldn't figure out how to turn her lens onto manual focus what what lens camera are you using? Uh, it's a Sony Alpha A6 uh, 6100. Yeah, but I I figured it out <laughs> when oh, okay. I came back. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, because some of them, you know, some. But I mean, yours is an APS-C sensor, so yeah. so some of them they have the setting inside the actual menu of the camera rather yeah. than on the yeah. lens. Yeah. yeah, that was a bummer. I mean, too late, but. That's why I was excited to try my manual focus, S but I guess so auto will work this time. So I'll give you a tip. You know, you know what I do with all my gear because I have I have a lot of gear, right? And I might run into something like you did that you're you're in the place and everything is happening and there's a mm. setting missing. You can't work it out. So I downloaded all the manuals from my gear on PDF on my phone. So anything goes wrong, I can just go into the phone. Um, I have an iPhone, so it stores it in an app called iBooks. So I open it up, go to the manual, type it in, find it, sort it. And it, I, I can't say it saved me like a lot of times, but two, three times that I needed something and it wasn't happening right then and there, you know, it was very, very, very handy. Especially if you're at a place shooting the Milky Way and there's no like reception on your phone or there's no internet or whatever, you know, it can be really handy. That's a, that's a great tip because that's exactly what happened with us. Uh, we didn't have good network to uh, Google out. And because, you know, when you use your phone and there's light and Priya was like, can I have fish <laughs> dark hair? I'm trying to catch yeah, the yeah. food. Stop Googling. So, yeah, it's, it's a great tip. Thank you. Welcome. Thank have you very much. Thank, Thank you. Guys. Mara. Thank have you. a good night. Well, guys, Thursday for the full moon. <laughs> yeah, let's go yeah. up, so, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Have a yeah. good night. Right. All the best, guys. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Good night, guys. Bye. Good, good night. Bye-bye.